गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स सो प्रोसीडिंग विद द टॉपिक ऑफ ट्रसेस टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस कैंटी लीवर ट्रस a special kind of truss in which you are having one end is completely fixed and second end is free so this is an example of a cantilever truss so this is a special kind of uh, a structure normally we are having trusses with uh, roller or hinge support mm -hmm. and we are analyzing that now today we are going to discuss how to solve this problem first why method of joints then i'll tell you how you can implement method of sections in this truss so first of all let us uh, see that the very first condition is what was the first step to calculate in the solving the truss is to calculate support reactions but it is not needed here that is undesirable action it will lead to more confusion so what is recommended that don't do your step 1 but try to find out a joint which is having two unknowns or two members meeting at a joint so you can see it this is the joint b where two members are meeting so we can start method of joint from uh, joint b then we can go to joint c and joint a when we'll solve these three joints we can solve see the force in ae we can determine if we analyze a force in ad we determine if we analyze a force in cd we can determine if we analyze c so that means we have to if they ask us to solve all the members that is to so find out forces in all the members we have to analyze only joint b then joint a then joint c okay so let us see that how to do it first of all as we stated earlier be careful about the angles so first we determine the angle theta with the given dimension this is 3 this is 3 this is 3 so tan theta is going to be 3 by 6 and this angle may be also needed so let us determine this also tan alpha is going to be 3 by 3 so these two angle we have determined now let us proceed to make uh, free body diagrams of all the joints so let us assume arrowhead away from the joint 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 means tensile force so we have assume all the members of the truss is under tensile force if we will get a negative sign that means it is not not tensile but compressive so start with joint a Uh, sorry joint b there are three forces you nomenclature is fba force at b because of a force at b because of c so what is the next joint in this direction c so fba and fbc angle is known to us we have determined it here so we can write the equation minus fab we are using summation fx is equal to 0 the equation is same we are using summation fx is equal to 0 right word positive and summation fy is equal to 0 vertical upward is positive so we are using these two assumptions so we have written the equation minus fab minus fab minus fbc cos theta is equal to 0 minus 8000 minus fbc is this component will come here fbc sin theta so this is joint a has been analyzed then we'll go to joint um, sorry joint b has been analyzed then we go to joint b but here again <clears throat> when we are going to joint b uh, see by seeing the truss you can see that some of the forces can be zero in the truss so this is uh, there is a point c which is um, uh, exposed to such kind of situation uh, we'll be explaining how to determine zero force member <clears throat> but one of the concept is coming here you see this is a straight line on c only three members are meeting and out of these three two are collinear so if two members are collinear and third meet at any angle that it becomes zero so that means if uh, mind well that there, there should not be any external force so at joint c there are three members are meeting and two of them are collinear so force in ac is going to be zero 
so that is going to be very useful for analysis further analysis so we'll go to joint um, c and joint a so joint c joint a we will write the equation f uh, we, this is uh, fvd of joint a we have given the nomenclature f a b four set a because of v f a c <coughs> f a d f a e this angle is alpha we have written the equation you can write down yourself now minus f a e minus f a d cos alpha plus f a b is equal to zero minus f a d sin alpha minus f a c minus 12000 is equal to zero out of this f a c is going to be zero this we can see from the joint number c so let us see the equation for joint c also <clears throat> at joint c two are collinear third is meeting so f a c is zero and we can resolve we can see this angle is going to be theta and this angle is also going to be theta that means f c b cos theta is equal to f c d cos theta that means c d is equal to c b uh, f c d is equal to c v and f c a is going to be zero we can put this f c a c as f c a is equal to zero and you can determine the forces from here so this is a um, simple way in a cantilever truss if a cantilever truss comes you should not confuse this is the way how you can use and solve the problem with method of joints but mind well method of joint is needed if they are asking you to solve problem for all the members if they want if they ask you to solve this problem with method of section so maybe they will give you some selected uh, members now what precaution is to be taken i am telling you maybe they are giving you calculate e a d a and d c calculate force in this members with section method with method of sections we have to solve this by method of sections so what we will do we will cut the truss in two sections how we'll cut we'll cut it like this okay now there are two section one section is this side section one and second section is this side this is section two okay so mind well always whenever we are using a cantilever truss and we are getting um, uh, we are using method of section we are supposed to analyze only free end only free section we are not going to pick up the section which is uh, supported so we have to pick up this section assume the forces in these members away from the joint tensile forces f a c f a e f a d and f c d and then analyze this uh, by writing three question of equilibrium you are supposed to determine these three unknowns so <clears throat> this is how you can solve the question it's very easy you can take first movement about point d i have told you if you are analyzing section one you can take the movement about a point which is in section two so suppose if you take analyze section one and take the movement about point d then the movement of this and this force will become zero and you can get this force directly from the equation one equation will be there this multiply by this distance this multiply by this distance this multiply by this distance i am i am not writing i am just speaking the equation 8000 multiply by 6 making it uh, clockwise rotation that is minus minus 1200 into 3 again it is minus then plus f a e multiply by 3 is equal to 0 with this equation you can calculate you can find out f a e once you have got f a e you can easily get you can easily get um, other forces or you can take movement about some other point and you can find out more forces okay you can write summation fx0 summation fy0 again okay or you can take uh, movement about any other point and you can proceed further so this is uh, i have left to you you can solve it just uh, the hint 
what is very necessary to you to understand is that in a cantilever truss when we are implementing method of section we have to select the free side this is the free side free section not the supported one this is always to be remembered and in method of joints if we are solving cantilever truss start with a joint which is which is free which is having only two unknowns not more than two unknowns okay so this is uh, this is what uh, for cantilever truss i wish to communicate you uh, thank you all and uh, you can try to solve this question you or many more questions on the cantilever truss because if it comes it should not be difficult for you thank you all listening to me stay tuned we'll uh, discuss in the next uh, lecture how to identify zero force members and uh, uh, some typical questions just i'll give you some hints thank you all